Come on in. I sound better. Hopefully, I sound better. I feel better. I'm still drinking um, hot stuff and um, lemons and stuff that can help my um, chest and throat. Um, but there's a word that dropped into my spirit that I do want to share with you. And also, I want to do say a word of prayer uh, this morning. Um, as I was um, as I was meditating, there's a word and there's a conversation that God was having with me and was talking to me about just about life and stages and just growth and stuff like that. And uh, He was talking to me about maturity, and one of the words that the word actually that that he spoke to me was that the maturity in the choice. And one of the things that he was letting me know just over just a period of time, because in the journey of, of church, in the journey of Christendom, in the journey of being a believer, you go through all kinds of stages, you go through all kinds of um, things in your life, and there are stages, there are seasons, there, and, and it's time. And when I look at my life, 10 years ago, I'm a different person. How I thought, how I felt, the choices that I made, the decisions that I made. And so what happens over a period of time, you get to a place where you become stronger in your will, your desires, your focus becomes even greater. As a man, one of the things that me as a man, as a father, one of the things my understanding has shifted from, um, not just in the moment, five, 10 years, my, my, my mindset has shifted from what I'm doing now is going to prepare, be prepared or prepare me for later. In other words, I'm investing in my time. I'm investing in, uh, in my kids. And the thing about it with investment, oftentimes when you invest, it's a sacrifice. So sometimes when you invest, it doesn't feel good. You're giving away, you're, you're giving money that you had. You're storing away money that you had. You're storing away time that you had. For that moment, it doesn't feel good when it comes to investment. See, investment, God wants you to invest, invest in this place, in this time, in this situation, in the trials and the tribulations that you will find yourself in where you're growing, but at the same time, you're facing different things. You're at the crossroad of life. God wants you to invest, and what he wants you to invest is your time with him. God wants you to invest your time with him. In your trials and your tribulations, in the times that you're living in, God wants you to invest into him your time. Because in your investing in your time, you're planting seeds. And the thing about fruit and seed, the more the seed grows, it becomes just like the fruit. And what you're doing, you're investing from faith. Faith comes from God. God gives even each of us a measure of faith. That's an ability. Also, the Bible lets us know that even Apostle Paul, when he was in a situation when uh, he sought God three times to get away from the warfare, to get away from the pain, to get away from the buffering and all of that. And he had sought God three times and saying, God, take me away. Take me away from this. Can you take me away from it? And then he, he God word came back to him and said that my grace is sufficient and my strength is made perfect in your weakness. The thing that you need to realize is. In your situation, that's pressure. In your situation, that's uncomfortable. God's grace is sufficient. So in other words, God wants to develop your confidence in your storm. God wants to develop your confidence in the things that you face. That when you turn to him in those situations, God is going to teach you how to become stronger than your situation. God's going to teach you how to outlast your struggles. Good morning, Deborah. I'm talking about willpower, 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 willpower is an ability from your will where you say, I can, I shall. And see what we need to realize that God has given all of us an ability, the power of choice. This is the word that God gave me. God says, I'm maturing my people's ability to choose. It's just like in a race. It's like exercising. The more you exercise, the more you become get in shape. The more your body become in tune with the rhythm of your body of getting in shape. Now it doesn't feel good. It feels bad. 
but you're getting stronger. And the more you exercise, the stronger you get. As an example, if I can use this, my son Daniel, you know, as I walk, he walk every day. Every day he walks, his legs is getting stronger every day. One of the things that I've never told anyone about my son Daniel, and, and many of you, you see, all of you, you see his willpower, his desire to get his life back. One of the things that when this virus hit him, I said to God, God, what can I do? First of all, I felt like a failure as a father and as a prophet. I didn't see this. I didn't see this. And that it hurt me. And so what I did, I trusted God. The secret to God's power, and I'm going to explain it to you. I trusted God. And so what I did, I said, well, God, I'm a, I'm a father. I'm a, he's my seed. What should I do? And God gave me a scripture of watching over his seed. And it would not return to him void. And so what I did as a father, you know, I was broken. The secret to God's power is being broken. If you want God to, God bless you, Myra. If you really want God to answer your request, get to a broken place. Because when you get to a broken place, then that's when your flesh and your flesh and how you want to do it will be broken. And then you can trust God. God will give you the strength. And what God will do, God will cultivate your ability to say no. Your ability to stand. Your ability to fight. And so the seed that I began to plant into my son uh, on May 9th was I laid, I tried to lay my spirit and give him everything that God has given me as a father. I spoke faith to him. I spoke life to him. I spoke direction to him. I spoke whatever I could while it first began. It was discouraging. It was hurt. It was tough, but I didn't let my son see my, my tears. I didn't let him see my fears or none of that. I fought against all of that and I knew that I had to be a certain way for him. And so what I did, I began to speak faith and I was saying to son, my son, you're going to do this better. You're going you're gonna to run better. You're going to jump better. You're going to do everything better. Trust God. Who are you going to trust? Are you going to trust uh, the doctors? Are you going to trust YouTube? Are you going to trust statistics? Or are you going to trust God? Are you going to trust statistics? Are you going to trust what the people are saying? Are you going to trust your dad? Have I ever lied to you? Do you know I'm a man of God? I'm not lying to you, son. You will walk. Trust God. And so I, and what I was doing, I was, I was lighting the fire under him. And I was letting him know, regardless of what come or what may fight. Fight. Don't quit. And I was saying to myself, God, I've lived my life as far as athletics and doing all of that. I want him to have his life. I want him to have his life. And I, I even prayed to God and I said, God, I don't want nothing. All I want, if, if I have any requests, is just I want my son to walk. That's all I want. I want no money, none of that. All I want is my son to walk. And that was my purpose. And so I, from that moment, I got locked in like a bulldog. And all I could see was faith. All I, I was speaking to his potential. I was speaking to him walking. I was speaking to him doing everything that he was doing greater. And what God was teaching me and what God was letting me know was that that's how he is with us. He speaks to our potential. He speaks to where he see us at. Just like you, when I'm telling you right now, God is speaking to your potential. You might be down in a quicksand. You might be broken. You might be even paralyzed physically, mentally, or emotional. You might be in a situation you might feel trapped, but you can get out of that situation because God is speaking to your victory. To that person who cannot walk, God is speaking to you walking. See, because it all is a communication. Something has been broken in your mind, in your body where communication has been broken. Your mind is speaking, but things are not responding in your body. That's why your body can't move. That's why your foot can't move. That's why your leg can't move. But today I speak and I declare in the word, by the word of God. What God said, Jesus said that he was wounded for our transgressions and he was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And by his strike, we are and you are healed. Everyone that's listening to me that are bound and you're in a situation where you need Jesus, you need healing. You're in a situation where you're paralyzed <coughs> from the waist down. You're paralyzed from the neck down. You are paralyzed emotionally, physically. You are, you are in a place where you're, where you're immobile, where you can't move. This situation got you trapped. Hear me. God says, get up, 
you can win. You are the victorious one. See, God has over 3,000 promises, and all of these promises are predicated on one word, obedience. Obey. If you obey God, you are healed. If you obey God, you will receive it. The Bible says, uh, according to his stripes, you are healed. Now, it's not based on a feeling. It is not based on an emotion. It's not based on what, what, what the doctors are saying. It's not based on statistics or, or what has happened to this other person, what's happened to that person. But it's based on your believing God. Do you believe God? And the moment that you believe God, what you will do, you will grab the seed of faith. And what God will do when you grab the seed of faith, what will happen? It will, it will begin to grow and manifest. Jesus said, all through the Bible, according to your faith, be it done unto you. Now, it's your faith. God is looking at your faith, not your mama faith, not your daddy faith, not your cousin faith, but it's your faith. And one of the things that I've understand and I learned is that willpower. Paul says in, uh, in Philippians, he says that I know how to abound and I know how to abase. I know how to do all things through Christ Jesus that strengthens. There's a thing about willpower. The more you listen and obey God, the more God will allow you to get you to see as he sees. Just like the young prophet and the old prophet that was surrounded in that mountain where the enemy was surround, surrounding them and the young prophet was afraid. But the old prophet prayed and said, God, open his eyes up and let him see. And God opened his eyes up and he could see God's army drawn for battle, ready to fight and ready to execute war, ready to execute battle. And see, this is what I'm trying to get you to see right now. It doesn't matter what kind of condition you are in. God says, God says, open up your eyes. I'm praying. I'm praying. I'm praying that you open up your eyes. God wants you to open up your eyes. I'm praying that you open up your eyes, that God open up your eyes, that you can see where you are. See, the battle is not your battle. See, Paul realizing that he said in this battle, he said, it's a greater war and it war against his mind. He knew <coughs> that it wasn't a physical battle. And knowing that it's not a physical battle, you can't look at things physically. You can't look at, oh, oh, my body. Oh, I'm sick. Oh, this happened to that person. Oh, it's not going to happen. Oh, these bills are being stacked up. God don't want you to look at that, but God wants you to look beyond that because God is greater than what you see. See, because Peter, <coughs> when Jesus, when there was a storm and they was on the boat and Jesus was walking the water, Peter was able to see. He saw two things. He saw the storm, but he saw Jesus. He saw the word. And as long as he got his eyes and looked at the word, he walked the water. He defied the storm. See, the storm was still doing what it was doing, but he was walking. See, what God wants you to understand and realize and bring you to is to get you mentally strong enough to know that, yes, stuff is there. <coughs> yes, stuff exists. But God's word is greater than what exists. And as the storm is going, I'm still moving. See, the thing about a word, when God gives you a word, it's going to cause you to move. It's motion. God's going to pull you out of the places you are or the place that you're in. <coughs> and he's going to cause you to move. And that's the place that God wants to get you to. The shift. The shift is simply trusting in God. <coughs> that's where the power is at. God, I believe you. I simply believe you. God, I simply trust you. That's the power. And the more you become intimate with God and you keep repeating and regurgitating, God, I believe in God and I trust you, what will happen? God will change the way you think. I mean, give you strength. See, because there's a power called dynamo, dunamis. That's power within power that's generated when it's under attack, when there's an attack, when there's pressure. And there's pressure in many of your lives. <coughs> and what's happening is that there's an dunamis that wants to be unlocked. And that dunamis is power. That a dunamis is resurrection power, authority, but also it's God's grace. God's grace is his ability, his insight, uh, his authority. In other words, God wants to give you authority <coughs> in your situation and it starts in your mind. Get to a place where you will not be defeated. You will not settle for anything but greatness. Just like with my son, Daniel, one of the things that God has taught me how I gave him my heart. I gave him my spirit. I gave him my essence. I gave him everything that I had as a father. And I spoke those things into him. And the manifestation of what God told me to do is taking place now in my son. And that is to fight. Mental warfare, willpower is to fight. Those leprous men, they, fight, they were facing two situations. <coughs> in both situations, it was death. 
It was either their condition, they was going to die in their condition of leprosy, or they was going to go into the enemy's camp and be killed. But instead of dying in their condition, they chose, they made a choice. They got to a place where they made a choice. See, because at a certain period of time, when you walk with God, God will teach you how he will mature your ability to make a choice. He will mature your ability to decide. And those leprous men, they decided to go and move instead of stay and die. And because they decided to go and move instead of stay and die, <coughs> God created God created a sound. And in this sound, God called the enemies to leave. And once they got to that city, spoils was waiting. See, the thing that you need to realize is that life <coughs> in warfare is not the way you think it is. <coughs> it's not. It's not the way you perceive it is. See, that's why the Bible lets us know that our war, our weapons of warfare is not carnal. See, God wants us to shift us, and the Bible lets us know also to know no man after the flesh, but after the spirit. Hold up. <coughs> I have to wrap this up, but know no man after the spirit. Know no man after the flesh, but after the spirit. Because when you know them after the spirit, you'll know the behavior behind when things happen. See, a spirit, a spirit, when people act a certain way, it comes from a certain, it's a certain reason why they respond or they think or they act a certain way. It's a behavior. It's a culture. It's a lifetime. It's, it's a thing where something has been talking to them. Something has been speaking to them in a way where it's then gotten to their spirit. And now it's become a behavior, whether it's good or bad. Faith is a behavior. Faith is a learned behavior. <coughs> Faith comes by hearing. Trusting God is a learned behavior. Believing in God is a learned behavior. Uh, having faith with God is a learned behavior. Having strong willpower is a learned behavior. It's just like lifting weights. The more you lift weights, the more you become more familiar with the weights. You're familiar with what you're feeling. <coughs> the same thing is true with spiritual warfare. The more you face what you face, the more you deal with what you deal with, and the people that you deal with, the more you're able to deal with it and the stronger you get. And the stronger you get, the more you're able to ignore those things. See, this is where God wants to get you to how uh, uh, by uh, uh, strengthening and maturing your ability, that ability to choose that way that God wants to get you to grow up. God wants you to grow up. Paul said that when I was a child, I mind those things as a child. But when I became a man, I put away those childish things. So uh, Paul grew up. He elevated. And in his elevation, he made different choices. See, when he was a child, he made choices as a child. But when he got a little older, he made choices as someone who was older. And so God is bringing us to a place. And the place that we need to be, we need to change the way we think. We don't need to look at our storm. We need to trust God. The way to get the power of God is by simply being broken and simply by trusting and believing in him. It's not nothing difficult to trust God. Now, in trusting God, you will go through some pain and you will go through much warfare. But in that much warfare, that's the sign and the indication that you are with God. Just like with Jacob. Jacob wrestled with that angel all night. But that morning break came. When, when the morning break came, when he was blessed, <coughs> also the angel touched him in his thigh and he received pain. So with your blessing and with your faith and where, where God is taking you through, there's going to be pain in your focus. There's going to be pain in your faith. There's going to be pain in your growth. There's going to be pain where God wants you to become and get to. There's going to be pain, but ignore the pain. Just like Peter ignored the storm and listen to the word <coughs> because the word is going to make you get you closer to Jesus. It's going to make you walk your thorn, storms. It's going to make you walk your situations, your walk your tribulations, the thing that you face, and he's going to give you victory. Let's pray. <coughs> Father God, in the name of Jesus, we thank you, we bless you, and we magnify you. Uh, we bless you, for this is the day that you made, and we shall rejoice and be glad in it. God, teach us how to make the right choice. Teach us how to make the wise choice. Teach us how to use wisdom. Teach us how to trust you in everything, God, and, and teach us how to fight in every situation that we're in. God, teach us how to fight. Teach us how to fight the good fight of faith because this is in our faith that's going to get us the victory. Just like with uh, Kate, uh, Jacob, uh, just like with uh, J Joshua and Caleb, they were men of faith. And even Caleb was so that he had so much faith that he said that, give me this mountain because I'm more than able to overcome it. And God, give us this courageous faith. 
Give us the, the kind of faith that was once delivered to the saints. God, give us the kind of faith that says that, God, I'm going to trust you regardless. Give us this faith, God, that's locked in like a bulldog. And God, we believe you regardless. God, teach us how to trust you and block everything out. God, teach us how to get before you, God, and, and, and stay before you and lay before your face, God. God, teach us how, God, to, to, to lay between the porch and the altar, God, and cry out for you in desperation. God, cause a prayer is a desperation, God. <coughs> God, we're desperate for your move. God, we're desperate for your power. God, we're desperate to hear your voice. God, create in us a clean heart and renew within us the right spirit. God, give those people that, that are listening to me right now that they're weak. They're weak in their situation. God, strengthen their, their ability. God, strengthen their power. God, strengthen their mind. God, strengthen them now that they can fight, that they can trust you. To each end, God, in Jesus' name we pray. God, we thank you and we bless you and we magnify you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And amen. God bless you. God bless you. Thank you all for coming on. The power of choice. The power of choice. Y'all have a good day. God bless you.